Yep, just got back from the tackle shop. <laughs> I only went to replace my waders. So anyway, let me um, get organised. ready so went to the tackle shop to replace if you remember the waders from the Ormond trip these ones here they um, kindly replaced the ones that I had they were obviously only lasted two trips so they're basically the same ones again we'll try them again and give another shot like you said they can just they do get what 40 ones so we'll see we'll see if these are how long these ones last so that's that. Sort it out. And these actually, these came off the internet. This is uh, the waterproof trousers I use. They're like ones you'd use on cycles, bicycles, this sort of thing, you know, just rain ones. They work perfectly fine, they're completely waterproof. It's basically when I'm pulling the pots just to stop my legs getting soaked and wet when I'm pulling the pots. Um, why don't I use the, the, the heavier ones? One, I gotta carry them or store them on a small boat, it's not easy. And they also, last time I actually looked, a long, long time ago, I went in to have a look at some waterproof ones, and there was the ones with the, the bib. They wanted like 100 pounds for them. This cost me five quid. A set of these will last a year, basically. And the other side of these is that when I buy these, I can just roll them up very, very small and shove them in a rucksack if I'm going, like, fishing off the beach, anything like that. And on the boat as well, easy to carry, easy to store. Three pairs for 15 quid. Can't say fairer than that, so like I say, when one pair breaks, I just put get them on the pair. So that's those sorted. Um, you might notice the new jacket, you might not, but this is the um, one I bought now for because I had this is a survival, a survival, a buoyancy aid, a thermal, whatever you want to call it. Basically, you fall in the sea, um, keeps you afloat and keeps you warm and that's the, the problem with wearing life jackets we have a life jacket here as you see we've got an osprey one sou'wester osprey i carry this on the boat but i very rarely actually wear this one because um the trouble with with the life jackets quite often is when you're working with stuff is these toggles and that and things snag on things all the time a friend i remember years ago he admittedly years ago um, when we were younger he was doing a few nets and he one time almost got yanked over the side when it snagged into a net or oh, i think it caught the buckle on this another time it fired on top of that i don't want to get them wet really because they use a salt trigger as far as i know and i don't know you know I don't, i'd rather not get the life jacket soaking wet so i always keep it on the boat and of course if i end up in bad weather or anything happens like that i will put it on um, aside from that, I like to carry my jacket. I use my jacket quite a lot when I'm actually fishing from the boats. On top of that, a uh, hot summer's day, I take it with me, but I don't necessarily wear it all the time, but I will have it with me. And like I say, if you fall in the sea with this on, especially at the wrong time of year, the biggest killer is going to be the cold. And where I fish, there's not many people out there. You get um, very few people in that area, whereas, say, the other end of the island, you've got lots of boats and things. So... Like I said, you've got to keep yourself warm if you fall in the water. Um, this one's actually quite good. It's got a whistle somewhere in there. It's actually got a whistle so you can send that. I picked that one up a bit today while I was there. Just the jacket. I, I had a previous one. I had a um, an Abu one. Uh, and the Abu one, basically after about 12 uses, it just started breaking. Like the actual fabric. Right. Anywhere, not sort of anywhere particular, on the back, on the arm, here, it just started getting cracked and splitting, which made it completely non-waterproof anymore, and uh, it was very annoying. The, the bottom part seems to have lasted a lot longer, although I don't use the bottom part much, the long john. So I just wanted a replacement jacket, which is hard to get here, because they always sell the suits, not just the jackets. I know in the UK you can pick up the jackets, but getting them here, and, you know, and, and it's the size thing, does it fit you? Do you have to change it? I'd rather actually try one on than that. And anyway, this one fitted beautifully and it's made by IMAX, so hopefully a lot better than the, the Abu one. 
time will tell. But we've got that. We also, these I actually ordered in from, these come from China actually, but I don't know if you can see that. Let me just see. See these? They're like little white bait. And they look really, really, really good. So we're going to try these. Um, the only trouble these are very small, they don't have any weight to them. So, I bought some. Well, I bought these the other day actually, because I've been there twice. So we've got some sort of lead heads, jig heads, whatever you want to call them. Various sizes, although I didn't like the attached thing too much. But I've got these ones, which have got like, um, you'll see, like a lead weight halfway down the, the shank. And that pushes under the lure. So I want to try those. I also got some larger ones. Some, just some hooks for the lures, because I was a bit short on hooks. And the other idea, the guy at the shop actually mentioned, which is a very, very good idea. I have actually used these before in the past, but um, the idea is you, you put your hook on, like um, you think in a shed full of fishing gear, there would be a fishing hook to hand. Hold on. Box lures will not be a big one. Get a big one. So, there's your, there's your hook. So the idea is you're going to put this on the line ahead of the hook up here somewhere. Uh, you see that? These little barrel ones, little tiny ones. And hopefully, we'll put that barrel ahead on there, above the thing. And then I'm going to pull the lure up over the hook, but I'm also going to pull it up over the, the weight. Now, the idea of these little weights, these little barrel leads, is I will show you. I've got a whole bunch of lures to try out. And it's these type of lures, these sort of grub, I don't know what they call them, grubs, something like that. Well, we've got all sorts of different ones here to try out, so little short ones. But the weight, I mean, weight's not too bad on the bigger ones, but the smaller ones. So the idea is we'll put that on a hook, not on that big hook, but a small hook. Then we'll push the lead into the nose area, or even over the nose, so it hides in the lure, to add weight to it so we can cast it. And then we'll see how well they work. But we, we've got... We've got loads of different things to try out this year, so there's all that. On top of that, obviously, we've got... Um, make sure I haven't lost any. Yeah, there we go. Some more. I bought several of them because, obviously, you know, things like that get lost. Yeah, obviously, we've got to try out our other lures, which is this one. Actually, this one is the one that I showed you on the... If you'd seen it, you'd have seen that one. And you'd have seen that one. And this one I actually, I, t I tank tested them. We got an old pool in the garden and I took them out there to test them when the weather was better. And this one wasn't swimming very well. It was having issues. It was doing the old side thing. So I decided, and the wig I didn't like too much either. So I changed the angle. I put another fin in it. I actually attempted to bend this fin by heating it, but it just snapped. Even when it was hot or whatever, it just bumped gone. So I cut a new one, put a new one in, as you can see, a new one. And I steepened its angle a little bit. Now it's much, much better. The angle was slightly off on this one. So worked out quite well. So live and learn type of thing. And you'll see that I've got another one. I've actually, I tank tested this one the other day. I just left it up there to dry. But you'll see there's another one here. Uh, it's not been painted yet or shaped. I'll take the hooks off. The hooks are only on it because I needed to get the, the proper weight for it. Now, weight-wise, the... The white one, the big one, it just about floats, just, but it's very, very, almost wants to go under. The small one sinks, and this one, I think this one floats just again. I've got them literally almost neutral, which is what I want, really. I don't want them, I'd rather have them heavy or neutral, because if you're heavy and they're a really bad swimmer, if they sink down, you can reel really, really slowly. If you have them too buoyant and they don't swim well, you need to speed them up to be able to sink them, you see, from the surface. But if they're not swimming well, they're kicking out, a lure that won't come off the surface is going to be pretty useless, really. I mean, yes, you catch on the surface, but what I want is a proper swimming lure down a little bit. But if you've got a reel fast, no good for a cast because you're reeling in too quickly. Sometimes you just want to get it out there. And if you reel really slowly with a bad lure, you'll still get it to swim nicely. You just have to slow your swim down. But you can't do that with the floating. So I think I'm going to make most of my lures either sinking or try and get them neutral getting them neutral is obviously the is the hard part and this one here this is a lure that caught really well last year and it literally the pins pull out of it it's garbage the pins pulled out um 
and what I did was I split the lure like that down the middle it's made of plastic but I managed to split it I got to where the holes are and I've rewired it with a with a brand new wire which goes the whole way through this also the problem with these is they didn't go down enough so I've weighted it it's actually got shot in it but it's also got lead shot in it now so it sinks deeper so I throw this in it'll sink down to the depth I'll wheel it in now this caught really well last year but like I say just the build quality was terrible so by rewiring it with a through wire we shouldn't have that issue anymore the wires that they had in there were literally a centimeter they were awful so and it's been painted white because that one was that the particular color of that wasn't wasn't very good anyway okay and as you can see here carrying on with the lure making I got loads more now I've turned up all these they're all slightly different sizes you've got narrow ones thicker ones you've got a great big one here now I've got a slight problem with one of them which isn't a problem because I'll just cut down it but it was still quite damp this wood it's fairly fresh wood and you can see when it was drying it did the old split which I thought might happen but fortunately the split's pretty damn straight so I'll just cut down that split the other, there's another one here that's split as well there's two the others seem all right for now so I've got to let, basically let these dry off let them uh, you know let that wood dry up so come up there for now but that's going to be more to test I've got ooh, what have I got there five four five five I've got another one I think I had one in my jacket pocket actually five I've got six plus three that are in production so we're up to nine lures we're gonna have, we're gonna have 10 12 lures by the time I've finished um, I wasn't expecting to make that many but you know it is you start making them and you know gets interesting you want to you do a design and you suddenly think no nah, I want to change that and do another design and you end up making so many different ones I don't want to make too too many though because I will end up having trouble trying to test them all and oh yeah there it is the other one another one and also went and got um, some shackles for our stern rope to the boat on the inside moorings so I got the chain tricks the chain runs past a rock like I might have explained but I forgot to get shackles for it. Now they didn't have any. This is eight mil chain. But they didn't have any eight eight mil shackles, apart from stainless. And of course, this is steel, so two different types of metal. You wear your chain out much quicker. On top of that, I don't like steel stainless. Trouble with stainless: if it gets barnacles on it, or it gets hidden under the sand, or hidden by anything it gets like an electrolysis which eats through the stainless and it can go really really quick in fact a guy lost his boat one year and he showed me this the shackle it was a big shackle and it had eaten all the way through within literally a month or two of the boat being down had eaten right through his through the steel and broken the shackle in two pieces and it was funny because the shackle looked like that looked like brand spanking new yet it was eaten away through it and that was a stainless one stainless needs to be you mustn't cover stainless, you've got to keep it like in the air. Opposed to steel, which is better when it's covered and it doesn't get the oxygen. But stainless, you need it exposed, not covered. Otherwise it can get that electrolysis and literally eat through and just snap. So yeah, a friend tried using chain once and uh, he was getting so fed up with it because where everywhere there was a barnacle would grow on his chain, like sit on his chain, he'd move the barnacle and there was a hole in the chain. So what I wanted to do was I've got I bought 10 mils on the assumption that I think they would fit. And on top of that I didn't have any 8 mils like I said. They only had the 8 mil stainless. So I bought 10 mils. I thought well I might be able to still get them through because it's not the thickness of the chain you've got to worry about. That's the whole size. So, so yeah, they are going to be actually a bit too small unless I can get the pin through. Yep, the pin goes through. So that's alright. So all we do is um, we'll just shove that. through there like that here we go so that'll be alright for the sort of rope part but um, I still need to I, I want to actually double the chain as it comes out from the deadman like that out the sand so I never have to go to the deadman all I've got to do is attach the rope from there and I can always know there's a double chain there as opposed to a single chain so that's good to go Right, well, weather's a bit yuck at the moment. No fishing, no fixing boats. Now, these waders, I got the replacements, but what I did was I 
went out. I went out. I bought some neoprene glue the other day. I used to use it, but this this stuff here. I got the black witch one, which is really good. I used to use that a lot on diving suits, and I got another one which I'm not sure on yet. Seems very similar. Seems a bit more thinner than the black witch. I don't know. I'd have to try them both properly. But all I've done is because this is where it was leaking around here, a bit of a mess, but around here, this is just neoprene glue, so I've coated it with neoprene because the leak in these is like a weep, it's not really pouring in or a hole. And I looked on the inside and I could not find a hole anywhere, even though it's like plastic, it's like this sort of stuff. I can't see a hole anywhere on it, which is weird because it's like plastic, you think you'd see a little tiny hole, but for whatever reason, I don't see the holes. But I marked where they were, I filled them up with water. This was maybe a weep, it might have been a drip that hit that. But here, both here, here, and at the back here, they were weeping through the fabric. So I coated it with neoprene glue, and that should be enough to stop the weep. We'll try it out and we'll see, you know. Um, like I say, these have always been great, these waders, and if they can last a bit longer, then I'm all for that. And quite often, I mean, you think using waders, I only use them for like the orm ring. I use them for bass fishing if I ever go freelining sand deals, but I do use them when I put the boat down. Because obviously the, the trailer goes in the water, you've got to float the boat off. So you're going to be standing up to your waist in water. And the waders are, the, are what I mainly use that for. So these, even if they only <coughs> weep like very, very slowly or are almost waterproof, that's fine. Because when I put the boat down, I'm only in the water for a few minutes. So I can just use these to, for that purpose. If not for the ormery or the bass fishing. Because the trouble with the bass fishing, obviously you're standing in the water um, up to your neck for... God knows how long. <sighs> so you can see things are taking shape slowly. We've got bobbers being painted. And um, yeah, we're slowly getting there, but just waiting for this weather to, to just calm down now. Next week looks good, so we might get out and do some fishing. I hope to get down the beach. I'm going to be going for, mm, well, it is an ormering tide, so I could go for ormers, but a lot of stuff's been found now and turned and all the rest of it. So I might just go and look for razor fish and some bits and bobs like that, get a bit of bait in for the, for the coming year for some fishing trips. Uh, I am going to try them because I've never actually eaten razor fish before, so that'll be a new thing. Um, I've caught razor fish many times before, obviously I've collected them, but I've never actually eaten them. But I do want to get some for the freezer because later on in the year, when we go bream fishing, that kind of thing, I want to take a bit of razor with me and just try some different things this year. We're going to be trying all sorts of different, like I said, we're going to be trying out all these new lures, the ones that I've got given and um, yeah we'll try some different baits and things for different things right so i better get going again like i say the weather's supposed to improve so next week i'll probably like i say we'll be doing the videos on the, the beach stuff i might go fishing i don't know with the fishing i might just go off the shore with a spinning rod or something but aside from that i'm going to be working on the boats we might do a few a video or two on the boat or just one video where we're fixing up part of the boat then we're heading into April and then hopefully the boat will be launched sometime in April now that all is down to the weather of course I need to look at the long-range forecasts and if I can avoid the big tides because that's when things go to hell over here when the, when you get big storms and big tides mixed together that's when it can get pretty horrendous the boat's pretty safe on a nip tide in the storm you get a big tide all the rocks get covered of course and the waves come in and they can slam into your boat even on the inside and send your boat to the bottom, even on the inside. I mean, I'm obviously on a very rough area of the coast, as opposed to being on the east side, which is town and um, the bridge, and this is what they call the bridge. Uh, that's all kind of pretty well sheltered. They've got marinas and stuff there. I'm actually exposed on open beaches on the other end of the island, so got to be a bit careful when, when the boat putting it down. You don't, you know, get the tides and weather wrong. And, uh, and then hopefully we'll get a good summer and we'll be back out on the boat doing some fishing. Shore fishing... At the moment it's kind of on hold because shore fishing, uh, I mean the bass will be coming in that's so we can go and do some bassing and that's what I plan to do is a bit of bait fishing but apart from that the shore fishing's a bit, it's a bit like that, it, it warms up a bit later on in the year, you know as the sea's warm so does the fishing. Um, at the moment it'll be very very quiet apart from obviously when the, the bass start making their way in to eat the crab. So but anyway, that's all for this one. Right so some time back on another video, probably a shed talk one. I said we'd have a look at the setup I use for where I do all the putting together the videos and the rendering and that kind of thing. Well, this is it, right here. 
Now what you've got is you've got two monitors up here. There's obviously there are two computers below. One is um, a six core and one is an eight core processor. What I'd really like to do, uh, not yet, maybe this year, because there's a new one coming out, is get a um, thread ripper because I mean that's just monstrous and for rendering it would cut down the rendering times massively. Um, it depends on what you're doing, but <clears throat> I mean rendering times can be sort of you know 30 minutes up to two three hours depending on what you're doing obviously the bigger your film if you're working in 4k or something like that it, it takes a long time that's where something like a thread ripper would be really good now you might be able to see i do like my tech as in computers i'm not big on like smartphones that kind of thing i've had smartphones and they always break and god knows what so but this like i said this is where i like to work on stuff and get stuff sorted out um so over here you've got a microphone this is just for overlay stuff. I don't tend to use it that much. Um, there's some headphones as well with mics on as well that I could use, but this is gives off the best sound, obviously, having a decent mic like that. You'll see on the walls there's egg boxes. Now, the egg boxes aren't to uh, make it soundproof. They're actually to stop the echo because you get echoes off the walls in here. Now, it probably still echoes a bit because I'm using the camera's mic, not this mic. So you're probably still getting a, maybe a bit of echo. You will get it in the other room where I do the so where I'm on the sofa stuff um, when I'm talking on that. But I can uh, we'll have a look in there afterwards anyway. You'll see the difference if there is an echo when we go in there. But basically that cuts out the echo on this mic and makes really good nice sound. And um, we've got other things in here as well. I mean like this thing here is just a DVD player, so I can always stick a DVD in if I'm bored of rendering and I can just watch a film or you know just chill out for a bit. These computers are also, because they've got very good graphics cards and they're very capable of computer games, that kind of thing. So you can always kick back, play a game, do whatever. And you'll see that this, you might better see that this is set up on, the mice are set up on a box here. This is, it keeps in line with the chair. I use like a wicker chair, like an old, like a conservative trying to chair. And it's to keep my arm in line with it because I've got armrest onto this box because if you've ever had mouse arm before you'll know how painful that is so and I have had that in the past when I used to use an office chair so I got rid of the office chair got a wicker chair got that down there which is a footstool that those actually stand on so you can put your feet up as well you know you've got to think about being comfy when you're doing your videos and uh, yeah and over here you can might better see these are actually I was saying a while back about uh, lens covers, trouble of getting them. Well, I've got some. Somebody got me some. And you'll see that that's all it is. It's just a lens cover for these cameras. Now, the thing with these lens covers, they're like tinted, so it gets rid of that glare that you get. Now, we were getting a bit of glare on some of the later films um, on the boat, I believe, were the ones we were getting a bit more glare. And that's because there's, like, a, like I say, a slight tint on them. But these actually as well... This is what makes your camera completely waterproof. I just snap one of these on and the camera then can go down to 30 meters if I wanted to go down to 30 meters, which I probably don't. But if I ever go into the water or do any diving stuff, then the cameras are waterproof without them to have like separate cases. And you probably can't see it, but over there on top of this computer, there's a box. That's actually a, another hard drive, I put, uh, external hard drive, because obviously all the films I make, I keep copies of everyone in case YouTube ever has a hacker or the system goes down or they just give up and stop making or doing films. Then I've got all my films backed up and can go, and go to another platform um, somewhere else. Plus, I mean, obviously, when they go onto YouTube, YouTube comp compresses those films and the quality gets destroyed quite often. So what you're seeing, you, the quality you see is not the quality that I've actually got recorded. The quality I've got recording is a thousand times better than what you're seeing on YouTube, but that's YouTube. And they have to obviously pack, crush things down as small as possible because they've got so many people making films, they need the space or place to store them. So anyway, there you go. This is, like I say, just a very quick sort of brief look at where I do all the sort of film rendering stuff like that. Um, the only thing I really want to add to this in here now is... I actually, there's a there's a keyboard in the house, and it would be nice if the keyboard could be set up to the computers, and then I could do my own sort of intro music and that kind of thing. If I ever do much music on anything, I've there is a keyboard there I can do all my own stuff and not have to worry about copyrights or all that garbage. You know, all the problems that come with adding music to your videos or putting intro music, that kind of thing. Um, if I write it all myself, then I won't have a problem 
in the future.